Today for the lineup, we are going to talk about a makeup item, highlighters. And I think that it's a makeup item that lots of people really gravitate towards, especially those of us who are sort of more minimal makeup wearers. It really only sort of came into vogue, I would say, within the last couple of years. I had the RMS Living Luminizer since like 2011 probably before that I don't think I had ever worn a highlighter. I will say I am a fan of judiciously used and placed highlighter so I primarily will wear highlighter just on the tops of my cheekbones, sometimes down the bridge of my nose, and a little bit on my cupid's bow. I personally am not a fan of highlighting like the tip of the nose or the chin or even like the brow bone highlight. I used to do more of a brow bone highlight when I was doing much more elaborate eye makeup like 10 years ago. But that said, I think everybody's sort of like face shape and contours are different, so highlighter placement really is sort of quite unique and individual to the parts of your face that you want to accentuate. So there are three main categories of highlighter formulations, at least that I know of. Maybe there are ones beyond these, but there are powdered formulations, liquid formulations, and then cream formulations. There has been a big proliferation of more eco and natural brands coming out with highlights, and I have to say, it's a category of makeup item that I think really has sort of achieved parity with a lot of the more conventional makeup brand highlighters, mostly in the cream category. So of everything that I pulled uh, across powder, liquid, and cream, the only eco things I have are in cream formulation. Now I will mention some that I know of in the powdered category. So why don't we just like enough with my preamble to this video. Let's move into my reviews and comparative thoughts of all of the highlighters in my collection. I'm going to start with powders. The first one I have is the Becca pressed version of Opal. Mine is actually cracked. <laughs> but thankfully so far it has not shattered completely. This came in a little Sephora set, I think it was called the Becca Glow on the Go set, which I think is actually still available. You get this little mini of the Becca pressed highlighter in Opal, as well as the liquid one, which I'll get to in a minute. Of everything in my collection, I probably use this the least, just because it's so intense and don't like to do a very so a chunk of this literally just fell out as I was talking, as I was just like, it hasn't crumbled yet, it's starting to crumble. <laughs> so there would be a minor criticism of these right there. They're very, very soft and crumbly. I'm sure everybody knows Becca. They're sort of most well known, I would say, for their highlighters. Powdered ones anyway are very, very intense. Opal is sort of like a champagne highlight, which is what I find is most flattering on my skin tone as opposed to the really stark whites or the really warm golden highlights. I tend to like more of a champagne highlight. I will wear this if I'm doing like clubbing makeup, like going out out makeup and I want to look like fully glam. So not reached for a lot, but they are extremely beautiful if you like an intense highlight. Kind of, I guess, working down the order from most intense to least intense in the powder category, the next powder highlight I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Bron Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is a powdered version of RMS Buriti Bronzer. It has a very pink, warm undertone, red, pinky, warm undertone to it. The highlight I do think is very pretty. Compared to the Becca one, it's more golden, I guess, but it's a little bit more subtle. Although actually swatched when I'm looking at them side by side, the Becca does look sort of, I guess the Becca looks a little bit more rose gold to me. It doesn't have like the same kind of like pink in it that Opal does. So this again is just a really nice sort of like evening highlight or if I want to set one of my cream highlighters in place for just sort of like a little bit extra, I will reach for this. I think it's nice. I am glad to have this in my collection. I think Charlotte Tilbury products are kind of pricey slash slightly overpriced, but the quality is quite nice. You get a really big, beautiful compact with a mirror. And as you can see, like I don't use these a ton, so I still have like a lot of product. And I think that it's a nice duo. Then I'm not sure if these would really be considered highlights, but I do have some of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. They have since come out with strobing powders, which I think are more traditional highlights, but I do actually think that this one in the middle and even the bronzery shade Radiant Light are nice highlighters if you want something really super subtle. 
I use all three of these as more sort of like a setting powder. Primarily I use dim light to set under my eyes, but sometimes I'll do just kind of like an all over set. If I want to do like a true highlighter, it's this middle one, which is incandescent light. This is like highlight for the person that doesn't want an obvious highlight and just kind of wants like some glow. I just think in general Hourglass makes very restrained, refined looking powdered highlights. So I don't have any eco brand powder highlights. The ones that I do know of, I think Alima Pure does some that are supposed to be very, very nice. I actually think, no, that one I think is a cream. I'm thinking of the Ritual de Fee, but I think that that's a cream highlight. Yeah, so that's kind of all I can think of off the top of my head for eco brand powdered highlights. If you know of others, obviously please share in the comments for everybody's enhanced knowledge. Let's move into liquid highlights, of which I have two. Opal in liquid highlight. So I like that this is sort of in the little travel packaging that came in that set, as opposed to the much larger pack that the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors come in. They come in like that big bottle pump that I just feel would be like impossible to get through. So I actually like this version of the Becca highlight better than the powder because it's much more subtle and it is more versatile. So Lisa Eldridge is a huge fan of these. She uses them all the time. Primarily she will either mix them, I've seen her anyway, mix them in with liquid foundation or she'll apply it to the high points of the face before going over with a liquid foundation. You can also do these on top of makeup and they blend really nicely and seamlessly. So you know, obviously not ego, but the formulation's very, very nice. It gives a true lit from within glow without looking like an obvious highlight. So a lot of times if I don't feel like doing a cream product and I want a lit from within glow that's going to last for a long time, I will use this over tinted moisturizer or foundation on my cheekbones and blend it in with a beauty blender and I find the lasting power to be beautiful and the finish is really super gorgeous. Or I'll use this as a first layer of highlight and then I'll set it with something like the Charlotte Tilbury highlight. That's if like I need my makeup to be on point and last for a long time. And then the other liquid highlight I have, it's actually I think time for me to get rid of it. It's the Josie Marin Argan Illuminizer. I think this is three years old at this point, but I used about half of it optimistically, maybe a little less than half. It might actually still be good. I really liked this. I bought this because I wanted a product to combat dry winter skin the winter that I bought it, and I bought it to mix in with tinted moisturizer. So I do think it's a it was a nice product for the time I used it. I haven't reached for it in a really long time, to be honest. It's quite peachy and golden, but I found that in the winter time, it did kind of give a sort of reviving, revitalizing effect to dry, dull winter skin, which I was really battling that winter. It hasn't been so much of an issue for me this winter. My skin has stayed in relatively good shape, but I do think this is nice. I don't even think she makes it in this packaging anymore. I don't even know if she makes this product anymore. I assume she does. But it's a nice option if you want kind of like a halfway eco brand. They're not perfectly cleanly formulated, but they're, I think, cleaner than something like the Becca. As far as eco brands, there are a couple liquid highlights that spring to mind that I, oh, one of them I have tried. So I'm thinking of the Gressa liquid highlight and the Maya Chia liquid highlight. I did sample the Gressa liquid highlight, but it's been a couple years. I think she still makes it. That one to me was beautiful. It had almost like a lavender iridescent lavender hue from what I remember. My only concern with investing in full-size liquid Gressa products is that I have tried the Minimalist Corrective Serum Foundation, which I did like, but I've reviewed before. My issue with Gressa liquid products is that I think it's hard to go through them quick enough so that they stay good and don't separate. So that was even an issue when I was sampling the liquid highlight is that the pigments in the highlight were separating from the oil. So it might be able to be quite easily re-emulsified just through shaking, but it's just an it's just a concern I guess I would have about buying full-size eco-branded liquid highlights because they don't use the same stabilizers and emulsifiers and preservatives to keep the product bound together the way uh, more conventional brands do. So pros and cons. The Maya Chi one I've heard good things about. I haven't, I don't know what it looks like at all, so I can't comment on it, but that is an option. Okay, now we move on to 
my favorite category because it's where all my eco brands live and it is the cream highlight category. I'm going to start with kind of the highlights that I have the most experience with and move to the newer ones in my collection. So one that I actually do not have sitting in front of me but was the very first cream highlighter I ever owned is the RMS Living Luminizer. I think it was just in my recent makeup declutter clear out video. I really love that product. I will assuredly repurchase it at some point. Of all of the cream highlights that I have or have tried, it is the coolest, iciest looking one. So it's very um, white and icy, I guess I would say. Also, of the ones that I have, sort of the wettest looking one on the skin. It's very, very creamy. It does have coconut oil in it. All of the RMS products do, which I know is comedogenic for a lot of people. I have never had an issue with coconut oil, so I love RMS products. Yeah, I guess that's what I would say about the RMS. It's very, very dewy looking, so I think it's great if you are normal to dry skin and you want something that's on the cooler end of highlighting spectrum You you and your skin tolerates coconut oil. The next one I'm gonna talk about, I think this was in my ride or die makeup tag, so that'll tell you how much I like it. It's the Well People Bio Brightener Stick. I have this just in a sample, which is very, very well loved. I fully intend to buy a full size or even just another small sample size when I run out of this, but it will always be in my collection. In fact, this could even be my second little sample of this. I may have gone through a full one of these and started a second one. I can't even remember. The reason I love this so much is because it is literally the perfect tone on me. It is a true champagne, unlike Opal, which is more of like a golden champagne. The Well People Bio Brightener is like a cool pinky champagne, and I just find that this reflects on my skin tone so beautifully. The consistency I think is beautiful. I actually don't know if this has coconut oil in it. I don't believe it does. I will I will definitely double check on the ingredients and make an annotation in video. I find that this lasts on the skin very well. I love the way that it looks. I don't think that it's too creamy, greasy, over the top. I find that it was slightly longer wearing on the skin than RMS Living Luminizer on me and I just liked the undertone better on me, honestly. To me, this is kind of like a perfect product, just as far as tone, longevity on the skin, appearance on the skin, just really, really stunning. Hard to overdo, I think, too. And it kind of sits in the middle of looking like a lit from within glow and an obvious highlight. Definitely like my ride or die highlight. The next one, is this little orb of beautiful goodness, the Modern Minerals Moonstone Highlight, which came in last June's Beauty Heroes box. This was in my best of 2016 beauty discoveries. It was also in like every eco beauty bloggers best of 2016 discoveries. It's a very, very beautiful highlight because lots of reasons. The color is gorgeous, but with this primarily for me, it is the texture and appearance on the skin that I think is so kind of noteworthy and groundbreaking about it. So it's much warmer in tone than the Well People Bio Brightener. This is more of a golden peach, so I will reach for this when I'm doing more like kind of bronzy makeup. I wore this a lot in the summertime because it's a very sun-kissed, I think, as opposed to the Bio Brightener is more of like a year-round product for me. I have found that I haven't been reaching for Moonstone as much in the winter just because I don't go for as much of a bronzy look on my skin. It is a cream product, but it functions as like a cream to powder on the skin. Again, on the sort of lit from within glow to obvious highlight spectrum, it airs much more closely towards the lit from within glow end of things. The way that it melts into the skin, there's not kind of like obvious chunks of glitter or anything. If this is like the spectrum of obvious highlight lit from within glow, this is sort of here and the well people is sort of here Living Luminizer would sort of be here. Okay, the next one is the most obvious cream highlighter that I have, and it is in the most gorgeous packaging of 
probably like anything in my makeup collection and it is K.R. Weiss, what is this called? Radiance. It's their highlight in Radiance. Now, I have vacillated for a long time about whether or not to put this in a products I regret buying video, not because I don't like it. I do like it. I just don't get nearly as much use out of it as I would like and for what I spent on it as like $55 because I don't find it to be terribly daytime appropriate. To its credit though, I've had this product for, I don't know, like a year and a half. I sort of lose track of these things. But the formula hasn't gone off and that is often a concern for me with cream products. So it still seems as good as new. So this is a lavender toned highlight, but the chunks of glitter and shimmer in it are just very, very obvious. I have a hard time wearing this during the day, I'll be honest. It's just not my style to look like I'm wearing visible glitter on my face on like a Tuesday in the office, you know? But for a really pretty like going out look, I think that it can be gorgeous. But even then, if I'm gonna do that, I have to do pretty minimal like other makeup because I just don't like looking so overly done with like dramatic eyes, bold lips, and like glittery cheek highlight. So I have to use it quite strategically, but that said, the whole experience of using this product is quite stunning. It makes me happy every time I use it. I get compliments actually often on my makeup when I do wear this. It's very, very pretty. It's much more cooler toned, but it's not icy. It's a true like pinky purple undertone. Just it reminds me of like an ice queen princess frozen, the adult version or something. It is so gorgeous swatched. I just have a hard time acclimating to seeing glitter on my face. The next one in my collection is the Glossier Haloscope Cream Highlighter in Quartz. They do these in two colors, Quartz, which is more of their sort of like neutral champagne. Oh, what's the other one called? Topaz, I think, or Citrine which is much more of like a warm golden highlight for deeper skin tones. The one that I think this is closest to, both in performance, undertone, and everything is the Well People. Both come in stick applicators, which I do think is a very, very nice for a cream highlight. I think that it's great to just be able to swipe and blend, and I don't think that you overdo it by doing that application method, especially with this one, because it has that sort of like moisture core in the middle. I will say of all the highlights I have, this one is probably the most subtle, actually. So if you want like a very, very subtle cream highlight, I think this is could be a good option. It looks more sort of like a lit from within glow, but it's not like as refined looking lit from within glow as some of the others that I have. So I would place it over here on, the, on that spectrum that I just did. Longevity is moderate. I would say I don't really detect this on my skin at the end of a long day, whereas I would be able to with the Well People. To be honest, if I were to recommend you to buy one, it would be the Well People Bio Brightener over this one. I just think that this one is, you get more payoff and bang for your buck. They're similar in undertone. This one might be like a hint warmer. In fact, actually this one is quite neutral. It doesn't lean too cool or too warm on my skin. So I'm glad I tried it. It's not something that's like, one of my favorite products but i do think it's a solid product and you know if you're into glossy makeup could be worth a try so now we're going to round out this video with my newest obsession i used it in my recent maquillage and musings video and it is the tata harper it's called the very highlighting luminous definition cream highlight i really 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 love this product. As far as undertone, it is most similar to Living Luminizer. I get a lot, I've been getting a lot of questions uh, asking for direct comparisons between Living Luminizer and this Tata Harbor product. This one does not have coconut oil in it. This one is less icy and more subtle than the RMS Living Luminizer. This is actually probably the most subtle cream highlight tied with the Glossier. These are both quite subtle on the skin, but the experience of the Tata Harper is nicer because the light reflecting particles in this are more refined than in the Glossier product. So I find that this just melds in with the skin kind of unlike any of the cream products that I have versus something like the Modern Minerals Moonstone. It's like they all kind of meld with the skin, but this one 
is melds with the skin in a moisturizing way whereas this one melds with the skin in more of like a cream to powder way so the finish is slightly different um, this actually is the highlight that I'm wearing today on my face I find that it gives a moisturized lit from within glow now do you see how there are all of these just like very minute differentiations between these products and like I'm crazy enough to be able to detect them <laughs> I don't think like the average non-beauty junkie would be able to detect these slight subtle differences between these all these products the finish that this one gives to the skin is almost like glossy but not like in a wet way in a refined like this one to me is just like the most refined highlighter I have it has a very slight cucumber fragrance which I don't find offensive at all I think that it adds to the whole experience of this product this one is very very hard to overdo and I think it's the most foolproof because it requires like n really no blending I think that this is a great kind of like on the go one to have too because it doesn't really require any blending so it's really beautiful Beautiful. It's hard to make it like a direct comparison between RMS Living Luminizer and this because they they honestly are quite different. They give quite a different effect. Living Luminizer is sort of like heavier, a little bit more obvious, which I think is like also a beautiful look. Like I love the RMS Living Luminizer look in the summertime um, or in the wintertime. I mean, it depends. This is why it's nice to have options just depending on what kind of mood you're in. I do think this is gorgeous. I'm so happy to have it in my collection and I wish that I had purchased it for myself much sooner. As far as other cream highlighters, I know that Ilia makes one. They make several actually in different undertones that are also coconut oil free and come in stick form. I think the brand Au Naturel makes some stick highlighters, don't they? I see other eco bloggers talk about how much they like their foundations and things like that. I feel like there was another one I had in mind that I'm now blanking on. Does La Bella Figura do a pot of cream highlight? They might. I know they do cream blushes, but I don't know if they do highlights. I'm not sure if Vapor does a cream highlight. They might. I'm like sitting here racking my brain. I suppose I could just look it up. Oh, another product that I've seen my friend Andy the Green Queen talk a lot about, Zabina Essentials does those glow sticks. One of them in particular I know she, Andy, really, really likes, and those are quite affordable too. Okay, I'm searching very quickly the detox market for highlighters. Living Luminizer, Kager Weiss Radiance, Well People Bio Brightener, Alima Pure Powdered Highlight, which I mentioned. The brand Kide or Kid, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, does a powdered highlight. I forgot to mention that. The new RMS Magic Luminizer, this is something that I've been hearing about. I don't have it. I don't really know much about it, honestly. Okay, so Vapor does do a stick highlighter called the Halo Illuminator for $36 looks quite white and icy just from the picture and that's it so I I covered quite a few actually so to kind of wrap up and sum up this video to give kind of my take-home points it's hard to pick one favorite because I'm like I'm saying I like to have options but the well people bio brightener is just I think a very moderately priced very high performing eco branded product that works for lots of people if you want something more refined than this i it's just kind of my new obsession i would say the tata harper these aren't cheap i think that they're 44 dollars. if you want a very refined beautiful eco product investment i would say this if you want something that's eco and more warm toned and with a gorgeous cream to powder finish that's i think this is great for like all skin types not just dry skin types that you typically think would do well uh, with cream products because the finish on this is so silken and if you like have money to spare and just want like a special occasion beautiful highlight care weiss radiance yeah and then of my powdered products honestly i think the best investment are the hourglass ones because they can be a setting powder or a more subtle powder highlight to set any of the cream products and then I do honestly really like having my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector liquid just as an option, although I don't think you need this like and this probably. I mean, it just depends. I'm kind of crazy. I love highlighters. Another lineup is complete. I really hope that this was helpful to you. Next up in this series is going to be 
face oils and serums which has been the most like highly requested one next to do so that will be coming up soon so please stay tuned give this video a thumbs up if you like these lineups and find them helpful I would love to hear about your experience with different highlights below if it's a category of product that you love as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching as always. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I will have everything listed and linked down below for your shopping convenience. Let me know if you have questions and I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye.